Apex has been in some trouble for a while now, and EA seems to have been digging a bigger and bigger hole to bury the game that many have loved for many years. With the recent Battle Pass scandal, I really thought that might have been the final nails in the coffin, but Season 22 Shockwave might just be reviving Apex to its former glory. We've got a new map, full class reworks, a ranked rework, brand new perks, new game mechanics entirely, the long-awaited Akimba weapons, and the brand new game modes that might just be the new life that Apex needed. So without further ado, my name is Big Winter, and let me summarize this new season for you, ASAP so you can hit the ground running. First up, I wanted to address the new game mechanics before diving into the new map and game modes. First of which, the long-awaited Akimbo P2020s are finally here. And not just this, we're also getting Akimbo Mozambiques, which sounds absolutely busted. To equip the second P2020 or Mozam, simply find the next one around the map and the Akimbo fire will start automatically. You also won't need a second set of attachments and you can toggle the Akimbo much like select fire. You can't ADS while Akimbo, but if you try to ADS, it will tighten the hit fire and both both P2020 and Mozam will be fully auto and the mag count is essentially doubled. Pretty dope, right? What's also cool is the new battle sense mechanic. Coming to all game modes when you damage an opponent, you'll get a glimpse of their health bar and as long as they're close, you'll also be able to see a slight red outline appear around the legend. Both the health bar and outline will disappear if line of sight is broken. This will either massively help get clearer info when sh hits the fan or for some, it might just clutter the UI even more. What do you think? Another massive change is to the controller and recon classes, which have had a pretty huge huge rework. Controller Legends now have a new zone overcharge passive which gives them 25 extra shields if they stay in the ring and this doesn't go above red. Furthermore, all Control Legends can now remotely pick up their traps and walls from range as long as they're not damaged. I already thought Control Legends were pretty strong but this is kind of nuts. Recon Legends are also getting a rework around the new Recon Beacons. The beacons now spawn much more frequently and only scan a much smaller range but will pulse with updated info as opposed to the previous static scans. They now also only give 75 EVO to combat the higher spawn rate. The Recon Legends themselves now get a new passive called Threat Vision, which essentially highlights enemies at all ranges, not just up close like with Battle Sense, but will also be broken with Line of Sight. What this now means for Vantage, Maggie, and Revenant with their passives has not yet been confirmed, but I'd expect some tweaks here too. A few other Legends have been hinted at some reworks, but the only confirmed ones at the moment are the Friendly Corsic Traps are now green at the base. Crypto has a new perk called Off the Grid, which makes him invisible whilst in his drone. Alter will be able to access Ring consoles, Seer gets two tacticals, and Vantage's ult does 125 now to mark targets. Moving away from the legends, there are some tweaks coming to the weapons and gunplay in general. Akimbo and LMG spawn rates have been increased, and all LMGs will now have a gun shield hop up with 40 additional HP. And they'll also share the same hip fire improvements the Devotion has, where the longer you fire, the more accurate the hip fire is. Shotguns now have less pellets, but do more damage per pellet for more consistent damage. Aim flinch is being removed whilst inside the ring, but the zone damage will still cause aim flinch, and this change is huge. Also huge is the 25% nerf for controller aim assist in PC lobbies. The console-only lobbies won't be affected. Looting has also seen a massive rework from the classic class and regular bins. Now from the third ring, all open loot bins will close and be restocked to allow for a more fluid loot pull towards the end of the game. Furthermore, a new mythic loot bin will spawn on each map. There will be only one, and it will take some more time to open, but does contain gold weapons and occasionally a care package weapon, which the R99 is now becoming. Taking a look now at the game mode changes, I wanted to start first off with what we know for the ranked season. I'm sure a full blog post will drop shortly, but so far we know there will be a reduction in the overall reset at split one. Additionally, there will be no negative RP for anybody placing above 15th place, which makes it seem like it's going to be another master's free-for-all. But that does mean maybe there's going to be less cheaters overall as there'll be less need to actually cheat. And Respawn said they'll be posting some details soon on the work they've been doing behind the scenes around the anti-cheat. But something that is brand new and exciting is the revival mode that's coming as a new permanent trios game mode and will be joined a few days into the season by the straight shot revival mode. This new mode is essentially rebirth from Warzone where as long as one teammate is alive you'll continue to spawn until the final buzzer where respawns are turned off. Similarly the respawn timer can be reduced by the living teammate sections like knocks and kills. This is honestly the lifeblood that I think Apex needed. A lot of the newer game modes were fun but honestly weren't fast paced enough except for a straight shot and three strikes. In the revival modes, players can play super aggressively, helping them get better at the game with less high stakes, which just means more fun overall. Good job, EA. Speaking of practice and newer players, the new game mode Bot Royale is launching this season. Much like in Fortnite, where your first couple of games are against bots, Apex now has a beginner-friendly mode to hone your skills before tackling actual players, and it will be set in a smaller map with slightly faster pacing to get the grips with things. In this mode, you won't be able to complete badges or challenges, except for brand new welcome challenges that are given to new
new player accounts under level 10 to help them learn the fundamentals. Once they reach level 10, they'll no longer be able to progress their badges in this mode. Feel free to add a teammate in the comments who needs to spend some time here. And now what I'm sure many of you have been watching footage of in the background is the brand new map coming to Apex called E-District. This will be the sixth map added to the game, but the first ever night map. Despite this, the devs did confirm that it is well lit to maintain visibility, and I imagine much of this is due to the use of the vibrant colors and the whole cyberpunk aesthetic to the cityscape. Set within Crypto's hometown with Suatamo, there are a total of 17 POIs, and this has been confirmed to be the map with the largest playable area yet. Despite its scale, though, many creators who got early access say it has remarkably few reused assets, especially those from other maps. They've also said that there is so much verticality in every POI, resulting in essentially a ton of new streamer buildings all over the map, which I'm really excited about. Also new to E-District are the new vertical and horizontal gravity launches to aid in building scaling and rotation in general. All in all, this is the thing that I'm most excited about. What are you most excited for? Let me know in the comments. What I'm sure nobody is most excited for though is the new battle pass. Now I've been very outspoken on this recently and actually made a video where I had a lot of bad things to say, but now that I've seen it, I'm actually very impressed. Whilst the monetization is egregious, the sheer quality of content in the new battle pass is actually very impressive. I won't be spending any money this season out of principle, but damn do these free and premium skins look good. Finally on cosmetics, the tracker system has been reworked to allow for a ton of personalization. In season 22, tracker frames will now be usable on any legend and you'll be able to customize them to your heart's content, which is such a benign change, but actually a really cool one. But that's it for me in season 22. I tried to wrap this up quickly for you, so drop a like and sub if you found it helpful. You have my thanks. I hope to see you out there in game or in stream as I'm probably live for some Apex right now, so come check me out. Until next time though, take care and much love.